Hello, my name is Dr. Mornay Mossad. I'm the Director of the Institute for Futures Research at Stellenbosch University. And welcome to this series on the future of the Sustainable Development Goals. This is part of a program by Stellenbosch University for its social impact, by which it works towards extending the footprint of its intellectual work. In this series, we will examine where the Sustainable Development Goals are going. Of course, as futurists, we're not only interested in where they've come from, which in this case was the Millennium Development Goals, and not only on their status, that is, the progress we're currently making, but indeed what their future might be. So, if you like, you can imagine it's 1 January 2031. The SDGs are essentially now a thing of the past, and they've been replaced by a new set of global ambitions. In this particular episode, we will look at SDG 8, that is, decent work and economic growth. From a university perspective, we're also particularly interested in employment and inclusive economic development. So, for this episode, the question really is, how could and should human development be matched with economic development in order for humans to benefit optimally from that economic development. It is, of course, quite senseless for economic development and indeed for growth to develop unabatedly while it may very well leave humans behind. In this particular episode, we'll focus on the ability of humans to develop their cognitive abilities to remain at least at an opportunity level of inclusion for economic development. So the nomenclature here is important. We refer particularly to cognition in relation to the idea of higher order thinking. For this episode then, how can humans develop higher order thinking in order to be included in economic development? Cognitive processing can include a number of other elements. It may include, for example, concentration, assimilation of information, the retention of information, or perhaps even its recall. In this instance, we're asking how can humans think better in order to benefit more from economic development. Now, we know a number of truisms about what's currently going on in the world. We know that the future is emerging at an absolutely exponential rate. We know also about futures methodology that extrapolation-based, projective kind of models no longer really work in rapidly emerging multiple futures. Those futures are also, we know, increasingly uncertain. We know furthermore that all technical challenges, and of course this is much of the debate of the fourth industrial revolution, are in fact socio-technical problems. In other words, it's essential continuously to think about technology in relation to how it might not only be used by humans, but affect humans. And we know also that linear, so-called expirational futures in which we perceive the development of the future simply to be a cut-off of the past and the emergence of the new, must now give way to what we refer to as simultaneous multiple futures. In other words, the development of a perspective on the future in which not one option only is possible, but a wide spectrum, a delta of possibilities in the future may in fact be the case. Much has been made of the psychological impact and the future of work, particularly as it relates to the disengagement of younger people. Other psychosocial elements, such as the fear of unemployment, have featured strongly in the discourse. Social disenfranchisement has been a particular focus, particularly as it relates to the emergence of a so-called new digital elite, those with access to technologies associated with the Fourth Industrial Revolution, in a certain sense becoming a new special group with special benefits, simply because of the amount of technology access that they might have. From a strategic perspective, and this is important for the Institute for Futures Research, we consider matters also in terms of their level of risk and opportunity. So indeed, there is some serious risk for employability of humans in the future, but there is also opportunity. 
In this case, we focus particularly on the opportunity that human cognition presents for inclusive economic development. Now, the idea of human cognition is often juxtaposed with the idea of artificial intelligence. That is the idea of machine learning and indeed machine thinking. And so the question is, can human cognition compete with machine learning? Well, one of the dilemmas then is how do we in fact outperform the humanoids? Well, in my submission to you here in this episode, the threat of obsolescence of the human intellectual capacity to its uh, anthropoid locums and extremely extended career paths, in fact, I think is misplaced. This idea of a looming Armageddon type battle with android proxies, I think, misses a very important strategic point. One of the key questions we ask clients in strategic facilitation is how is the strategic landscape asymmetrically structured in our favor? Let's assume that the landscape is asymmetrical, but how is it asymmetrically structured in our favor? Now, it is clear that machine computational abilities by far exceed human computational abilities, but let's apply that same question to humans. How is the strategic landscape asymmetrically structured in favor of humans? Well, the perhaps rather unsurprising answer is that humans best compete where humanoids will struggle in the art of being human. That means that humans must shift the competitive landscape towards this finer, agile, fluid art of humanity rather than being drawn into the rigid science of approximating the, the uh, behavior of instrumentation. So the unique composition and the functional and also the imaginative fluidity of the human intellect in the context of really a rapid foreshortening of horizons for decision making within the broader context of high speed, high impact scenarios may in fact present its distinctive competitive advantage in the future of work. Now, a number of very specific competencies for intellectual development have emerged. And these competencies may indeed aid the transition to facilitate greater inclusion of humans in the economic development of the future. And I'll mention just a few of them. The first, in our view, is what we refer to as a new value chain of imagination, anticipation, creativity, innovation, and agility. In other words, since the Second World War, there's been a hyper-specialization of skill. And as a result, humans are now competing with machines on a hyper-specialization. But humans have the ability for much more systemic strategic awareness, and that value chain must include, in our view, the ability for humans to think in an imaginative way, to anticipate some of the opportunities and risk, think creatively for the creation of new competitive advantages, then to innovate, that means also to commercialize, and then to respond with agility to its environment. The second competitive advantage of humans is the idea of a purpose-driven curiosity supported by lifelong learning. Purpose-driven curiosity, in other words, the idea that I have a purpose. Machines do not have a sense of purpose. They have only a functional purpose. And for that reason, motivation for humans may be driven much more aggressively by purpose. And then curiosity. If we accept the premise that things are changing all the time, humans must remain constantly curious. Other elements of cognitive competitiveness for humans include alternative non meccano complexity driven cognitive processing. That means fluidity, a systemic view of the world, and a study of elements such as discernment, the erstwhile byproducts of a classic university education. I do not believe that we will ever escape the need for competitive enterprise. This is driven by the idea simply that demographics will make it highly competitive. And even if we were all to decide to collaborate today, tomorrow, more humans will enter the space and new opportunities for competition may arise. 
We also, I think, as humans, have to transcend experience. And the idea, therefore, of experience transcendence becomes an important future human intellectual ability. That means that we must not only have role models from the past, but role models inspired, in fact, by imagination. Discernment, then, becomes a particular competence which machine learning is unlikely to provide. That's discernment, of course, on elements such as What's the ratio of noise to signals, for example? How do we discern the ability to transcend trends and not just follow what the big data suggests? How do we develop a new media literacy in which we can discern, for example, fake news and post-truth? And how do we acquire, for example, tacit knowledge, which machines are very unlikely to be able to do? Furthermore, we'll need the ability to become autodidacts. That is, the ability essentially to teach ourselves without the intermediation of a classical pedagogue. That includes a whole host of self-educational abilities, which must include also, among others, for example, digital dietitianship, the ability to discern what is a healthy digital diet. We will never be able to escape the essential need of social intelligence, which must include the ability to work with diversity, manage conflict, and also the ability, of course, to work with others in terms of persuasion, influence, also crowd navigation, encompassing both the discerning sourcing of crowds, but also the participation in ever widening and ever diversely growing crowds. And then, finally, the idea of evolutionary ecology. The ability of humans to think not only in natural ecological terms, but also conceptual ecologies, organisational ecologies, personal social ecologies and institutional ecologies. And then there's the need for thinking about how we will fund what has now become a very long career indeed, as life expectancy of course grows. And in another episode, we will look at the particular funding requirements that may emerge as a result of this whole suite of cognitive competencies that humans need to develop. So, it is indeed so that the robots are coming. But humans have particular advantageous dispositions in the future world of work. We believe that the development, the active, explicit and discrete development of cognitive competencies will in fact present humans with a distinct opportunity to remain included in economic development. In this way, the future of the sustainable development goal of economic uh, development and indeed decent work for humans within that economic development increases its probability of success.